Hey, everybody. Hey, Al. So somebody said to me last week, hey, Al, you got that captain of the Titanic look going on. <laughs> so I went up and researched it and found a picture of it. Remember this guy? He went down with the ship. Captain Smith, so I said, uh, if this routine I'm doing tonight stinks, I'll know how he felt. <laughs> so I'm from North Jersey, probably so. We got a funny way of talking over there, I know. I've heard all the jokes. Things like, let me tell you a couple of three things. <laughs> or, hey Joey, where'd you get this gabagool? The Mutzadel, the Cabotel, and don't forget the Shriadel. I mean, this, this. I'm not even Italian, but you know, I, I sometimes find myself talking like that also. You know, it's, it's just one of those things. You pick up the culture. And it's a different culture a bit than New York. New Jersey culture, you know. I found that out working in the NYPD. I worked with guys. They were cops, their fathers were cops, grandfathers were cops, great-grandfathers were cops. And I was a Jersey boy coming over there, and, and it was a little bit different. I mean, these guys were great street cops coming out of the box, and I'm like, you know, this is a whole new world for me. So I'm down in my house in uh, the Jersey Shore this past week. It was a tough week being, being retired. A lot of things <laughs> happened. I'm sitting there having coffee, and this thing, the whole house shakes. What the hell is that, right? I've never experienced an earthquake before. So I did the responsible thing. I uh, climbed up on the roof and waited for the tsunami to come. <laughs> so, uh, I like a good conspiracy, just like the next guy. So, I saw the eclipse was coming. So I wrapped the whole house in aluminum foil, <laughs> made a hat for myself, went down into the basement in my little bunker down there, and uh, I said to my wife, here's an air horn, give me three blasts when it's all over. And she said, it's the eclipse, you idiot, not the apocalypse. <laughs> So, my wife works full time, and I'm very appreciate, appreciative of that. I, I, I love her. And uh, but after she gets a few drinks in her sometimes, she'll, she'll start in on me and say, you know, it's not right. It's just not right. I'm the woman, and you're the man, and you're the one that should be, be working, and, and I should be home. And, and my wife is a hardcore feminist as it gets, and I say, well, I'm a liberated man, I believe in feminism. The right for women to have their own careers and make lots of money and all that, and make their own choices. But uh, i got to tell you something, I do have a job in this marriage. And there's two words to describe it. Trophy husband. <laughs> Well, that didn't go over too well, but she said to me, you know, you have a lot of free time. There's a lot of things around the house that could, could be done, you know. The roof, we could use a new roof. The uh, faucets need changing out. The vanities need updating. The floors need to be refinished. And I said, wow, that's quite a list. I don't think I could do all of that myself. So I did what... Uh, any responsible homeowner would do. I went to the parking lot at Home Depot, <laughs> where there's about a hundred guys there lined up looking for work, and I saw four Mexican guys, and I said to them in Spanish, you know, come on over, I got some work for you. They jumped in the car, brought them over to the house, and I pointed out a few things, and gave them a hammer and some tools, and they started going to work, I did like what a lot of retired guys do. I went and took a nap. <laughs> I woke up a few hours later, took a look outside. My house looked like a taco stand in Tijuana. <laughs> I guess I should brush up 
on my Spanish. So I said, well, i got to correct this. I went back to Home Depot, and I saw there was four young Irish guys there. And they, all, they had their two belts and everything like that. So, you know, I looked at them, and I, I did my Irish jig over to them. <laughs> Introduced myself and said, boys, are you looking for work today? And they said, we are indeed. So I said, come on in. Get in the truck. I've got some repairs I need you to do. I need you to undo what the Mexican guys did. So they came over and they said, yeah, no problem. So I said, okay, I'll go out to lunch. I come back. My house was now a thatched roofed cottage with a stone floor and a hundred sheep running around on the backyard. You just can't get good help at Home Depot parking lot these days. So then my phone went off and I got a text about 11 o'clock in the morning. And it's from one of my retired friends. He said, Al, we're going to church. Are you interested in going to church with us? I said, I got nothing better to do. Well, church is just a code word for the old man bar that opens up at 7 a.m. in the morning. You know, the kind where they've got a big glass jar of pig knuckles in vinegar and it smells like stale farts when you walk in. That's the kind of place this is. So then we're, we're having a few drinks, and George, the bartender, says to me, Hey, Al, the lady down the end of the bar just bought you that drink. I said, Oh, really? So which one? She, she's down there. She's about 85 years old. She's in a cocktail dress. So I said, I'll go over to her. And I said, Well, oh, thanks for the drink. Thanks very much. She says, Listen, Sonny, you look pretty good. And she takes out a folder. And I'm looking, I'm like, what, what is she trying to show me? Oh, here's her bank statement, pension statement, 401k, <laughs> social security statement, and a deed to a condo in Boca. And I'm like, what is all this about? She says, you think I got time to waste? <laughs> this could all be yours. What are you waiting for? I was like, what the hell? So uh, I said, how am I going to get out of this? And she says, oh, I have to tell you, I also have four cats. Each one of them is named after one of my dead husbands. I said, that's it. I'm out of here. I don't want no old lady with cats. Thank you for the drink. I'm out of here. <laughs> so uh, I go down to the post office. I need one stamp. Just one stamp. A woman comes in. I open the door for her. To let her go first on the line. She gets on the line. I need seven money orders, she tells the clerk. All for different amounts. That takes about 15 minutes, and I'm standing there, and I'm saying, oh, boy. I knew this was going to go bad. And the next thing she says to the clerk, I need three books of stamps, but only the ones with the spring flowers on them. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, we're all out of them. And now she's getting really mad, and she looks at me, because I'm, you know, I, I, this is like a half an hour into it now, and she says to me, well, what are you looking at? This is the lady I let go <laughs> in front of me. Big mistake, right? And the next thing you know, she she starts to square up on me like like this. I'm like, well, go ahead, Granny, bust a move. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. This retirement thing is not as easy as you think. It, it, it can be work sometimes. And I'll just finish up. I go to the movie theater. I figure, you know, they have a matinee for senior citizens. So I come up, like an 18-year-old kid there. I said, yeah, I'll take one senior ticket. He says, well, I need to see your ID. I said, oh, you just made my day. I must not look my age. Thank you for that. He goes, you look your age. <laughs> it's just company policy for us to ask for it. <laughs> Oh boy. Well, anyway, I just want to tell you that I'm sure there's some people that are retired here, but uh, 
I kind of feel like, you know, said some, said sometimes things get any easier, they don't. And uh, you just got to make the best of it. And maybe one day will come, I'll say, I think I'll just go get a, get a job and be back in the working force. Okay, thanks everybody.